Welcome to Literacy Live. You want to know what's happened in the real estate market? Then this show is for you. I'm your host, Matt Literacy. Well, today we are talking about the Chicago summer market. Um, we are heading into the summer and things tend to change. I believe there is a big difference between the spring and the summer market. Uh, there's always this big spring rush, which I think starts in mid-January. I know that that's winter, but I think the official spring market starts mid-January and it bleeds all the way through till mid-May. And then all of a sudden, right before Memorial Day, you kind of notice what I would call a shift in the market. And we're kind of going to kind of talk about a little bit about that shift and what's happening in the summer market. So we got together some questions from peeps about summer market, what can happen, etc. We're going to do what we've kind of done in the past, just read these off. So how do I define the Chicago summer market? I define the summer market as starting right before Memorial Day through August. So pretty much traditional summer months, except it starts a little bit early than traditional summer. Um, when does the summer market start and end? We just answer that. What's the typically happening during summer markets in the past, pre-COVID? So pre-COVID, the summer market would be strong till mid-June. Mid to end June would be like pretty good. July would be like a decent month and August would be terrible. August is normally... Uh, our worst month of the year for contracts pending. It's a busy travel month. So I'd say August is our worst month, and that's kind of when it really starts to die down. That's typical. This year, I think we're going to see something different, as I think that July is going to mimic a normal August. Um, How do you think this year will be different? Well, that's what we just talked about, is that we think it's going to change because I think it's going to be the busiest travel season of all time. That's what every expert has said. Um, you know, United just hired 300 new pilots. Every single company out there is hiring pilots. Uh, every hotel is already booked. You can't get flights or hotels almost anywhere right now. And August is always really slow in a normal year because people are traveling. There's really only three weeks because one of them is Labor Day. Uh, and it's just people got a lot going on. You got to remember the fact that in the last 18 months, people haven't gotten married. They haven't seen friends. They haven't seen family. They haven't left. Uh, And now that people are vaccinated and the cities are starting to open up, I I think people are going to be gone. And I think this year, the market's going to slow down a lot sooner. I mean, like I said, July is normally a pretty good month. But I think this year, July is going to be an awful month for sellers, a good month for buyers. Um, What is it typically happened? uh, I'm sorry. What are the normal major summer market dates to watch out for? And where will they be different this year? So there's two huge dates in the summer to watch, actually three huge dates in the summer market to watch out for. The first one is Memorial Day. Uh, In Memorial Day, right after it, I call it the summer rush. So what happens is right after Memorial Day, you see a ton of inventory hit the market. It, it's it's an overwhelming amount. So we always go from this low inventory. Everybody's talking about like, sell your house through me. There's no inventory, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden the summer inventory hits and the demand naturally drops. And that's when all of a sudden you kind of see the inventory stick a little bit more. So you're going from an inventory levels of here and the demand here. And all of a sudden after Memorial Day, you see this start to shift. We're going to see that's the first big date to kind of watch out for. In a normal market, July 4th is the next big one. July 4th is when you get uh, the end of the summer rush, okay? And that's when people um, who wanted to list in the summer but were late. We as Americans are always a day late and dollar short, so there's a lot of people who planned on listing Memorial Day. They were behind, and they don't list till after July 4th. After July 4th, I would say demand is half of the amount that we saw before Memorial Day. So we literally see showings get cut in half right after July 4th. You could sell a place in March, first day on the market with multiple bids. And then all of a sudden that same place, you get list the day after July 4th and it'll be crickets. It's a noticeable difference. The third big date to watch out for is Labor Day. That's the end. That's when everything's over. That's when the, the official fall market starts. So those are your three big dates to kind of watch out for for the summer market. Um, when do you predict mid-sized downtown buildings to make a comeback? Uh, I think, you know, probably in mid-June-ish is when we're going to really see the confidence really come back. You know, there's two main reasons why the downtown markets have uh, been struggling. Uh, you had COVID and you had the civil unrest. Well, COVID is done. 
you know, they've, they've Chicago has officially reannounced that we're opening up in July. We're going to do another podcast about that. Uh, but you know, we don't, Pritzker has said we don't have to wear masks anymore. So we know it's, it's over with, we need people to go back to work. And with the mask rule going away, people can start going back to work, but the civil unrest has not gone away. And people are still really scared of the downtown markets. That's the biggest problem right now is, is COVID isn't holding the downtown markets back as much as people being scared to move to the downtown markets. Uh, and it's a very real problem as much as people don't want to talk about it. Um, I think as long as summer looks and feels good, meaning people are out at restaurants, people are walking around, the downtown market will come back. Now, if there's some big problems down here uh, and there's a lot of issues with the city, then the downtown market may never come back. But I, I, I would like to believe that everything's going to kind of prevail. So I think by mid-June, people are going to start seeing other people out again. People are going to be back to work. Uh, at that point, we should probably be around 75, 80% vaccinated and back to work. And that's going to change the market and make the comeback. The downside is by that point, people will already kind of be done with buying. So although the confidence will be back in the market, the overall demand has dropped. Do you think prices will go down this summer for the luxury single family home market? For the single family home market, I don't think the uh, prices will go down. In fact, Typically, after Memorial Day is when you see a bigger spike in luxury home, single family home sales because a lot of people have kids. Uh, and in a typical year, the kids are getting out of school and that's when they're seriously looking. And that's when a lot of inventory comes to the market for people to look because people usually don't want to list during school season because they're tied to the school cycles. Um, do you think the in town buyers will return? Yes. Uh, as long as, again, everything in the city holds up and uh, we don't have any huge events happen in the city, I do think the in-town buyers will come back because people have a lot of money, as much as the media doesn't want to tell you this, there are a very lot of rich people who don't know what to do with their cash. And the second home market is actually having the greatest year of all time. And Chicago typically has a huge second home market, which we haven't seen in the past 18 months. And I think naturally, these people from our surrounding states are gonna be buying in-town units in Chicago again. Do you have any fun summer plans? I do not. I will be working every day except for July 2nd to the 5th, in which I will take my annual Napa trip. But otherwise, uh, nothing is great for us. Uh, when will inventory pick back up? Uh, right after Memorial Day. We talked about the, the summer rush, which is we're going to see come. Uh, are you seeing any decline in market activity up until now? I think we have peaked. I think the inventory levels have peaked mid-ish April. And I think every day from mid-April till July 4th, we're going to see a steady but slowly decline in activity for buyer demand. And on the flip side, we're going to see a steady uh, but slowly but steadily uh, increase in inventory. So demand's going to slowly decrease while inventory is going to slowly increase. And we are going to head towards a balanced, maybe even slight edge to buyer's market by the 4th of July. Um, when will inventory pick up? We talked about this. Our summer's usually slow. Yes, August is normally slow, as we discussed. August is, is, is dead, literally dead. It, it's not uncommon for, we'll, we'll get like maybe 80 showings on a Saturday from February to May. Uh, and in, on in August, we might get 15. It's, it's a big difference. We, we usually have a better September, actually, we always have a better September than we do in August. Because by the time September hits, you get the fall buying activity that comes back. Um, what drives the summer market trends? Um, the rent cycles. There's two things, the rent cycles and travel. The rent cycles, you know, Chicago being one of the most rent heavy cities in the country uh, with people's leases come to March, April, May, first part of June. By mid-June, all those people have made that decision. That's why there's a huge slowdown. Then that couples with the fact that, you know, we're in a city that has a lot of younger people and they like to travel. They have weddings. They have events to go to. I've talked to three different clients in the last couple of days who said that they can't, they can't even find a weekend where they're actually going to be in town this summer because they're going to Michigan, Wisconsin, they're traveling, all this stuff. And it's, there's going to be a lot going on this summer. And that's what's going to help set these summer trends of where the activity is going to go. So if you're a buyer or seller, you really have to pay attention of how do you catch this wave. If you're prepping to think about putting your property in the market by waiting until June or July, you're going to miss the boat. And if you're a buyer right now who has time and you don't have a gun to your head, in four weeks from now, it's going to be a completely different market for inventory. You're going you're gonna to sit there and say, wow, I can't believe how much stuff is out there compared to right now where there's nothing on the market. 
Are any of your clients returning to work downtown or larger corporations uh, or are or are larger corporations still uh, working remote? I would say that a, a vast majority of my clients are getting notice that they're going back to work. I wouldn't say that they're back to work officially in office yet, but most of them have gotten notice that they're going back any time between like July and October. Uh, you know, Ken Griffin said, who runs Citadel and uh, for a living, he predicts uh, things. And, you know, he said two Fridays ago that uh, by June 1st, most people are going to find out they're going back to work. And if he says that, ever since he said that, magically, CDC has said that the masks don't have to be worn anymore. And um, it, all indications are we're right around the corner from, from this thing kind of completely going open. When that happens, you're going to notice a big difference. Like we've already seen our clients ask us to alter their search to go back to the high rise market. The other big thing people are starting to see is they're getting frustrated at the fact that you have to vastly overpay for these little buildings and you could get a good deal and pay under market value for the high rises, which makes a huge difference. Do I think some jobs are going to stay remote? I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure some of them will. Uh, I think 95% of you know people will go back to work. Uh, I think a lot of people want to go back to work, but I'm sure there's 5% of people who won't go back to work or find some companies maybe have found it's more efficient and get rid of some office space. There's a lot of people who talk that they think office space won't exist anymore and that it's going to change. I'd be willing to bet heavily against that. I, I, I think people think they're going to be working from home, but I think as the rest of the world opens up and years from now, maybe two, three years from now, the, all these companies who brag that they're all going remote, I, I think they will f officially be back at the office. I'm sure everybody thinks I'm crazy when I say that, but I, I, I strongly believe that people will be there. And, and, and I look at the past for it. In, in the history, people have always worked in offices. And I understand the world's changed. We have internet now and all this other stuff. But I just don't think the average person or company really is going to strive long term with this. People are talking about right now about how they've been you know, just as productive, if not more productive, uh, working at home. And I, I say to them, I say, well, that's great, but you don't have an actual real scientific study to determine that. And people say, well, well yeah, we do. We were, we've been working at home for the last year. I say, of course, but everybody's been working at home. Let's see how great that company is working at home when everything else opens up. When everybody else is doing it the old way, right? And you're doing it now the quote unquote new way, which way is gonna be better? I think it's gonna be different. I, I think it's too early to tell if somebody is better working at home when everybody else is working at the office, and then you can compare the stats and see which one's better. Um, are you advising clients to list during summer or wait? I mean, you got to get it on the market. I mean, if, you don't, if you're not on the market, you're not going to sell. And it's not like the summer is terrible. It's not like nothing sells. It's just a different market. It's just not a one day on the market and sell. A lot of sellers think that they're going to put their place in the market and it's going to sell in one day. And you know what? In March or April, you can maybe have that mentality depending on what type of product you have. You got a high rise, you're screwed either way. But I mean, the reality is, is that it's still good market. You know, I, I would use the word good for the summer months. It's just not unbelievable for sellers. You know, right now, well, a few months ago, two months ago, it, it was so seller heavy. It wasn't even like interesting or fun for the market at all. It's just going to be a little bit more closer to balance in the summer. So it definitely makes sense to list. Um, does your team have, get more time off? in the summer months if the market is slower. Uh, we do not believe in, um, what do they call it, summer summer hours. We do not <laughs> believe in, so somebody's boyfriend has summer hours here, uh, which means they don't work Fridays and they don't have to work on Mondays. It's so like Tuesdays they go in. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't believe in summer hours here. You gotta work. I mean, we're gonna, my goal, even though July and August, I think it'll be terrible, because I know it's going to be so bad, I'm trying to alter our business model to make sure that we crush it in July and August. So um, I, I would like to be just as busy, if not busier, in July and August, even though the market's not going to technically be there. Will prices increase or decrease during summer? I think the prices are going to decrease. I think there's a lot of people overpaid for a lot of stuff in the spring, and I think things are going to level out. I mean, there's people right now where a property is worth 450. It goes on the market at 475, and somebody's giving them five and a quarter and waiving every condition. And then that's going to close. And then it's going to be July, and there's going to be no demand. And there's one sale at five and a quarter, and there's 15 sales at 475. And I think, you know, 
the one person, the seller, the listing agents be like, well, they sold at five and a quarter. I think the buyer's agents, representative buyers can be like, yeah, well, one guy overpaid in March and 15 other people paid 475. Like maybe I'll give you a 480. So I think we're going to see these, this height of pricing uh, drop a little bit in the, uh, in the summer months. That doesn't mean that prices technically go down though. You know, you can't base an entire price point on a few people who overpaid for it. You know, you got to take kind of a little bit more of an average. So if there's 16 sales, one's completely overpriced and 15 or more in line, uh, it doesn't mean that the price is necessarily dropped. It just means that they're going to kind of go back to normal right now. It's fictitious territory. Um, is it easier to get a deal during summer? Absolutely. Especially in August. August is when sellers freak out. They're super nervous. They're going to have this in the fall, the winter, and then next thing you know, it's 2022. So July and August are great months to buy because literally you have half, if not less, demand that you have in March and April. It's substantial difference. I'm telling you right now, you're going to see a different market. It's, and, and people say, well, how do you think it's going to happen so rapidly? For anybody that listens to any of these things, in December, everybody said they wanted to take their you know, business to the suburbs and we couldn't give shit away in Lincoln Park. And we had about 10 plus months of inventory. And then by the end of January, there was two months of inventory. So that's how quickly a market can change. So just remember, it's, it's going to be different. Um, do you think anyone will be, uh, do you think there will be any change in multiple bid situations? Uh, yeah, I think there's gonna be a lot less multiple bids. I don't think that right now multiple bids are the norm. And typically in a normal market, in a normal spring market, multiple bids are the norm and summer months, they die down. Now, if you live in the suburbs or you work in the suburb market, I'm sure the suburb market's gonna still remain hot. Watch that trend because next year I think it's gonna be different. We're gonna talk about that in a different podcast. But um, you know, the reality is is that I'm sure summer months, suburb houses are gonna, you know, uh, multiple bids will be the norm. But for the markets we work in, the downtown markets, multiple bids will be um, maybe a 25% occurrence instead of more of like a 50 to 75% occurrence. Um, if you don't have an exact time you need to sell or buy, when would be the best time to do so for the rest of the year? June, July, August. That's it. You want to buy June, July, August is that perfect balance where there's prim, like prime, prime, prime inventory and less demand. And especially in August is when you have deals because that's when people freak out, like I said. Um, will the summer be a seller's market? No. I think it's going to be a balanced market, maybe slight edge to sellers. Slight edge to sellers. We'll, we'll, we'll rephrase that. Slight edge to sellers in the what we call been calling the outskirts outside of the immediate downtown area. And in the downtown area, I think we're going to head more towards balanced. I, I, think, I think the confidence will come back. Uh, but, uh, you know, right now is just a, a, a one-sided seller situation. Um, do Chicago school schedules impact the summer real estate market? In a typical year, single-family homes, townhomes in, you know, favorable school districts, it definitely makes a difference. But otherwise, it does not. Uh, not in the condo market. What are your plans uh, for growth this summer? Um, our plans are to continue to... Um, you know, succeed and continue to uh, grow the business. And, you know, we're up substantially uh, year over year. We're, we're up in the tune of 30 something million um, this year closed compared to last year. That's not even including pending. Uh, to grow in the summertime, what my goal ultimately is to um, make sure that the new staff is trained, uh, that they're ready to go, uh, that we have probably another agent ready to go and then try to take in more and more business to continue to grow our market share and then position ourselves for the spring next year when it goes absolutely crazy that we're 1,000% built for all the extra business we're going to take up. So, you know, we continue to add to the game plan and, and try to continue to expand. How does your team navigate scheduling with vacations and time off? It's tricky. We try to have a rule that only one person is out of town a weekend, which has been um, a struggle. Uh, because I, I find that there's typically two people out one of the days on the weekend. Uh, and it's, it's busy. It's, it's tough because people still want to take a few days off. And if two people are out on a Saturday, it can make things tricky. I mean, it's not like we're not able to handle it or we've, we, it's not like we've struggled with it. It just becomes a little bit more stressful with scheduling, uh, especially last minute. Uh, because for some reason on Saturday, most agents don't plan and 10 a.m. hits and we get like 30 short requests for 12 o'clock. And that's a, that's a problem that can happen in the spring. But in the summer, it's, it's not as difficult because 
like I said, we, we may only average 15 to 20 showing requests on a Saturday, which is very, very easily manageable compared to something around 70 or 80, you know, from February to April, May. Um, are you still adding new agents? We'll, we'll probably try to add one before the end of the year. Um, just, just one more. Um, are housing prices hitting new highs in Chicago? In Chicago proper, yes. Uh, I think they were, they're up 8 or 9% year over year, which is insane. Um, but the markets we work, uh, they're up anywhere from you know, 0.5% to 3%. So we're not, we're not hitting highs in the areas we're working, but you know, Chicago is a very large area. They include the entire city, and then they include the surrounding suburbs, and they call it Chicago. So uh, you know, you got to be looking at it on a micro basis and not a macro basis when you're talking about the price growth. And that's a big problem that people and agents have is they're talking about, hey, it's the greatest market ever. And I'm like, well, what are you selling? You know, people are like, hey, it's an insane market. I'm like, okay, is it insane in River North? Because there's 12.4 months of inventory. I don't know if I'd say that's an insane seller's market when it's the highest seller, uh, amount of inventory of all time. So remember, when you talk stats, you got to make sure that you're talking about a specific area. Um, what impacts whether you advise a client to buy, sell, or hold? Uh, it depends on their situation. Everything's relative to them. If they have to buy before Memorial Day, uh, I'd say it's a great time to buy because who knows what the future is going to hold and rates are low and, you know, there's still a decent amount of inventory in like certain areas of the city. But, you know, if, if you don't have to buy for two years, you got to look at your situation. Like, is it worth throwing, you know, $3,000 a month away down for rent? So, I mean, I, I could go a million different directions with this. I, I got to know what the situation is. And then it's I, I cater my answer relative to what concerns that person's interests. What's happening on the commercial side of real estate in Chicago? Uh, everybody thinks the commercial market is crashing, but from what I've heard from my commercial friends is it's crushing it. I mean, you see a lot of vacancies, especially on Michigan Avenue. That's a problem that, that Lightfoot's got to figure out how to fix. But minus that, from what I'm told in the office sector is that there's a lot of people looking to buy. I mean, I've said this a million times, especially during my COVID series, that you don't get rich in good markets, you get rich in bad markets. And people see opportunity. Like this is when blood's in the, in the water. This is March of last year when the stock market dropped to 17 points. This is this is when you want to get in. So if you ever thought about investing in commercial real estate, there's literally no better time than now. Like when everybody else is scared and you got a bad feeling in your stomach because you're so nervous about what might happen and everybody tells you you're an idiot for doing it, that usually means that you're doing the right thing. So um, yeah, commercial the commercial market's bottom and, and I, I think that commercial market's gonna have a hockey stick growth in the next 24 months. Um, how do you think this new mask guidance will impact the summer market? I think it's going to uh, crush it. You know, most people have been moving to the burbs because they think nothing's going to be open here. When people move to the burbs and Applebee's is the only restaurant they have open and they come downtown to visit a friend and the city is like completely popping and everything is back open and all the concerts are back and all the restaurants and all the reasons to live in the city is back completely open again. We'll see if that was a great decision for a single 24 year old to buy a place in the suburbs. Um, does demand for outdoor space increase during the summer market? Yes, because you can also show it off better. So when you got a sick roof deck that has like unbelievable features and there's four feet of snow out the door and I can't show it, it's pretty hard to get somebody excited about it when it's 85 degrees out and you got the beer flowing on a kegerator upstairs and you got everything in bloom up there and they can take a look out there and, and see how nice it is. So yeah, if you have a big outdoor space, of course, you know, late spring, early summer markets can be the best. What do you think? <laughs> what do I think about the uh, Brian Urlacher's home, uh, the sale of Brian Urlacher's home? I, I don't care. Uh, I didn't even I didn't even know he sold his home. That's that's how irrelevant it is to me. Um, does the uh, wait? How can you improve the look of outdoor spaces for selling during summer market? Have it well furnished. Have, having an outdoor terrace or big roof deck furnished well will make a huge difference. So if you don't have nice furniture, stage it. Also, put a lot of like uh, plants and flowers out there. If you have nice decor, flowers, and really nice furniture out there, it'll sell itself. And you do like a cool night shot of it, it's, it's literally a complete difference. The problem is most outdoor roof decks I see are completely vacant. So we'll go from like a vacant one and people are like, I don't know what to do with the space. And they go to another one and they got like beautiful flowers and like, like really nice outdoor furniture. And people are like, wow, this is like next level. And it, it could literally be the same space. And that other person maybe invested 2,500 bucks in flowers and staging. So definitely make sure that it shows well. Do I ever go to the Chicago beaches? No. I used to have a rule I had to go to the beach once a summer. This was when I was like under 30 with my wife. And that stopped a long time. That was probably eight years ago, nine years ago. Last time I was at the beach. Maybe longer. I don't know. It's been a while. 
Um, what are the biggest trends to watch for in Chicago summer market? After I would say the number one trend to watch, really pay attention to, is the day after uh, Memorial Day. You're going to see a noticeable, noticeable, noticeable difference in the amount of inventory that's going to come and the amount of demand that's going to go away. I can already see the market is shifting. It's kind of like when you know it's going to rain and it hasn't rained yet, but you just know what's going to happen. I feel that same exact way about the demand. I can already sense that the demand is dropping. Um, is it better to list during summer or wait till mid January of next year? I, I would, I would list during summer and see what happens. I, you know, if you're on the market in June and now it's October, I'd probably pull it in October and wait till like mid Jan mid to end January next year. But I would definitely give it a try in the summer. What can we expect for the post summer market? I actually, as much as I think we're gonna have a terrible July, August, I actually think September till November is gonna be phenomenal. I think, I think the, I think the terrible July market we're going to have is going to be made up in some uh, in September and October because at that point I, I do feel 90 plus percent of people are going to be back to work and people are going to be fully confident in the city again and we're going to see the international market come back. That's when I think international market's going to crush it. And there's a bunch of super 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 wealthy international people that do not like to have their money in the stock market. At some point, a lot of experts predict that this summer we're going to see a a small kind of dip in the stock market, you're going to see a lot of people pull that money out, sit on it, and wait to strike for big cities. And I think Chicago is going to be one of those prime markets because we do have a huge international presence, which I have not seen almost a single buyer internationally speaking for 18 months. I think they're going to strike in Q4. So that's going to be a big, big trend to watch out for. Um, that's it. That's all of our questions we have today. So make sure to tune in to our uh, next episode. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening to Literacy Live. Make sure to tune into our next episode and subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening to Literacy Live.